I have a lot to cover. I won't cover it all. Uh, some of it will be mysterious to you at the outset, but let me give you a hint of what this is about. This is about someone called a customer. Let me ask you, I don't know what disciplines or fields you work in, but who in here has a customer? Come on, come on. If I'm a parish priest, my customer is the parishioner. If I'm a teacher, my customer is a student. If I'm an accountant, my customer is a client. If I'm a musician, my customer in the, is the audience. Who here has a customer? All right, now we're talking. Okay, uh, I'm often challenged to summarize this mass of material in a sentence, a phrase, or preferably a single word, and I always failed to do so and lost my motivation to try when I heard the following true story. When Mikhail Gorbachev was still running the Soviet Union, he was challenged by a young journalist to summarize the state of the Soviet economy with just one word. Gorbachev's English was okay, it was not great, he felt uncomfortable, and he said, if I had to use one word, uh, if I had to use just one word, uh, if I had to use one word, I would say the Soviet economy is good. This wasn't the level of insight that the journalist was looking for, so she said, okay, Mr. First Secretary, why don't you use two words to describe the Soviet economy and Gorbachev smiled? Because now he could communicate exactly what he wanted to. He said, ah, if I could use two words, I would say the Soviet economy is not good. Um, the prophetic Gorbachev could have been talking about our businesses and our industries today, but you can apply his thinking even on a micro level. Where is Sofia and Roxelana? We were here at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Do you see the room around you? Uh, well, it looked like this, and it looked like this. So you can see how quickly not good can become not just good, but exceptionally good. Um, every meeting has rules, and this meeting has rules. And the rules are jungle rules. You can stop me at any time, ask a question, make a comment, disagree, agreement is okay too, but it is your meeting. Uh, I'd like to start in a very funny place. Uh, by accident, Christina and I were at Yale uh, in 2012, and a friend of ours who is an administrator at the Yale Art Museum took us on a tour. And this is what we saw. 2012. This is what we saw. Uh, and I said to her, how much did this cost? And she said, $70 million, with a very big smile. Mm -hmm. And I said, when did you start your fundraising campaign? And she said, in 2008. Does anyone remember 2008? The world economy crashed. I said, how did you collect $70 million in 2008, 9, and 10? And she said, we have a brilliant curator who is a great fundraiser. First thing you learn in business, never believe what anybody tells you. <laughs> Including me. Um, but instead of believing her, I started thinking about this. How were they able, in the depths of this phenomenal recession, to raise $70 million? Any ideas? Think, sorry? They had good? One word, alumni. I spent an hour thinking about who are the alumni of Yale. How long have they been alumni? Where do they work? Who can they influence? How much money do they have? And I finally understood why it was possible to renovate the Yale Art Museum. And that is the reason, despite my telling Sophia absolutely me, that I'm so delighted to be here. The alumni of UKU are its single most important group because you will determine 
what this university is 20 years from today. Uh, I also have many annoying habits as a speaker. Many of you uh, who have a sense of fashion are shocked at my unfashionable spots. They're because my knees are terrible and I have a couple of braces on them. So, will be okay there to prevent me from falling. Uh, but the other annoying characteristics that I have is I ask the audience to do things. So I will ask you to write down on a piece of paper or in your mind, who saw the movie Amadeus? Mozart composed in his head. You can compose in your head. Please write down the name of one person that you know who should know Uku, but doesn't. Who doesn't know what Uku is. Just write down the name of one person who will take an email from you or a call from you to understand what Uku is. Now, who here believes in confession? Whoa, we have work to do. Okay, I believe in confession. Uh, and I have to confess to you that I did not know that the School of Journalism, started just a few years ago, was last year rated number one in Ukraine. I did not know that 41% of the incoming undergraduate students scored in the top 5% of the national exam in external independent testing. I did not know that UKU has 100 academic partnerships around the world with Catholic universities like Notre Dame and non-Catholic universities like Wharton and others. I didn't know that 40% of the students in master's programs come from outside of the Chennai. I didn't know that a team of our students in the master's <coughs> program in data science went to Canada for a global competition called the Queen's Innovation Challenge, and they finished in third place. They made $6,000 in the prize, but the more important thing is in the real world, they developed ideas and programming which helped the Bank of Montreal improve their revenues in one of their important product lines by 3%. I didn't know that last year, Uku was rated one of the 10 best brands in Ukraine. But here's something that I do know. If I didn't know those things, I think that there are a million other people out there who didn't know those things. So now, I want to ask you to write down the name of a second person that you know, that you personally know. Could be Catholic, could be not Catholic, could be Ukrainian, could be not Ukrainian. Someone that you know who should know Uku, who should understand Uku. Here this gentleman is not writing anything down, so I know like Mozart is having uh, the second person on his list. My first person is Yarko. You don't have to use the uh, uh, second name. My second person is Lori, who is not Ukrainian and not Catholic. Um, so we will develop this as we go along. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, at this point, you're thinking, who is this crazy person in front of us? And why is he here? Uh, I do teach a set of courses uh, at the business school. Uh, and I'd like to mention just a few things about some of them that will be relevant to you. Who here, by the way, is in business? Oh, excellent. Please pay attention later on when I say we need a few billionaires, okay? But we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Um, what these courses are basically about is to try to understand how the external world is changing and how we can get ahead of those changes instead of being victimized by them. We always begin with value migration. And by the way, this set of materials, this course material, was not modified for Uku Business School. It was not watered down. It is exactly the same material that is presented to these organizations around the world. And one of the things that I confess that I do know is that Uku with its master's program graduates and its custom design programs for a variety of industries and companies such as Vodafone and Nestle has already reached a thousand students in the last few years. That is to say, a thousand students who have been directly exposed 
to the best ideas on management, strategy, operations, organization, the best Western ideas, and the best Eastern ideas. They look in both directions, and that will have an incredible impact on the rate of growth of this economy in the future. Um, we always begin with value migration, because in the last 20 years, companies that were once unbeatable and powerful did not see how customers were changing, did not reinvent their business model, and lost their value to companies that did three things. Understood how customers were changing, met their priorities, and kept asking themselves, where will we be allowed to create profitability in our industry? Why start with value migration? Because the single biggest problem in business, and for any organization, profit or not profit, is staying with your previously successful business model one year too long. Um, value migration has not slowed down. It has accelerated and become more complex. Industries have started competing with each other. Long ago, there was an industry called technology. You know the players, the hardware and software players. There was a telecommunications industry, a media industry, and a consumer electronics industry. Now, do you know Google? Is Google a technology company? Yes. A telecommunications company? Yes. A media company? A consumer device company? You know Amazon? Same questions, same answers. You know Apple? Same questions, same answers. Why talk about these people? Because they invented a very different way of thinking that for all of us who have customers, and if you think you don't have a customer, please come see me at the end of this talk. <laughs> for all of us who have customers, they invented a different way of thinking. They said, I don't care where I come from. I don't care that I'm a software company or a telco or a media company. Here's what I do care about. What is the hassle map, carta result of the customer? And what dots do I have to connect from wherever it takes to fix that hassle map for the customer in a radical and elegant way. Uh, some of you are familiar with hassle maps, others are not. For those of you who are not familiar, you'll be 100% familiar in a minute and a half. Classic hassle map before Netflix, Saturday afternoon comes along and the question arises, what movie will we watch tonight? And step number one is fight with spouse. Uh, for those of you who think I am making this up, please ask Christina what our Saturday afternoons were like. So then somebody gets chosen, inevitably me, to go to the store to look for movies to watch. Being very risk avoiding, I keep searching and I pick three. I come back and then what happens? Uh, we have another fight because I picked three but I did not pick the right three. We compromise, we watch it, and then what happens? I forget to return it. And I have to pay a fine of $30 to $40. And how do I explain to my wife the $30 to $40 fine? I pay that left fee, late fee, but next week we do it again. Netflix comes along and understands us and changes how we do things. Helps us go through this in advance, look through recommendations, and they keep evolving their process and their business design to keep making it easier and easier for us. And I don't care whether you're a high school math teacher, a parish priest, an accountant, a lawyer, a business person, or an opera singer. All of us have customers, and all our customers have hassles. And what these people have taught us is how do we understand them and fix them? And value migration became larger and faster than before. The 21 traditional leaders across these industries were worth $2.6 trillion. 11, at that time, very small players who played across the value chain were worth much less. Look at what happened in a decade. Why do we care about this? Because we want our economy to be on this line, not on the top line. Uh, What's so difficult about this is human nature. Because of course, this is not about value chains, it's about the customer. What these companies learn to do is reverse the value chain and start with the customer. Very easy to say, almost impossible to do. But we can do it. Let me ask 
my good friend Yoga, to help us accomplish this. Um, you all know the alphabet from A to Z. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X, Y, Z. Pick the language you'd like, and when I say go, silently in your mind, recite the alphabet as fast as you can. Ready, set, go. Stop. Okay, anyone need more time? No, we're good. Now, let's do exactly the same thing. Just go in the other direction. ZYX all the way back to CE. Ready? Set? Go. Stop. Anyone need more time? These people, no kidding. We wake up every morning thinking about my product, my people, my politics, my revenue, my profit. They wake up every morning thinking about my customers' problems, my customers' decision-making, my customers' profit, etc., etc., etc. We can learn a tremendous amount from them. But we have learned a tremendous amount from them. Um, when people see this, they recognize that very often, most of the time, their organizations are not moving as fast as the market. So this is the clock for the tech companies. I presented this to a very famous media company and said, you know, they use a digital clock, you use a grandfather clock. And I thought I would get into a lot of trouble. And I did. Because someone at the back of the room said, no, 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 we're not like a grandfather clock. We are much more like a sundial. Uh, and then somebody else said, no, 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 we're not like a sundial. We are actually like Dali's persistence of memory. Um, very, very important point. Are you familiar with startup companies? Name me a startup company that you all know. Okay. Uber, Airbnb, Tesla, SpaceX. All these people who are startup companies, they are very fast. They are very focused because they have to be to survive. They are very frugal because they have no money. They are very customer obsessed. They are very quality obsessed. And they are very, very obsessed, not just with protecting their culture, but with strengthening their culture. And the hidden fuel that enables their growth is word of mouth. I think I have just described Uku, the greatest startup university in the world, and one of the great startup companies in the world today, with two differences. The first difference is Uber can get you a ride. Airbnb can get you a room. SpaceX can get you a rocket. Now, most of you don't want a rocket, but if you're in the satellite business, you really do want a rocket. Tesla can get you a car. What can Uku get you? Uku can get you a half century of high achievement and high service. It is the only university I know which is the following equation. An education at UKU equals excellence in a discipline times, not plus, times ethical behavior times a strong sense of service. I want to contribute to my community and to my economy. Mastery of the discipline times ethical behavior times a sense of service. What is it that Uku does not have that the startups have? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. So now I'm going to ask you to put down number three and four of people that you know who should know Uku. And I'm warning you that by the end, I'm going to ask you for 10. Not 11, 12, 15. I'm going to ask you for 10. Because if I didn't know about the School of Journalism and the brand and the quality of the students who have come in, there are a million other potential investors who don't have the information that they need to make an informed investment decision. And we can help make that happen for them. Uh, by the way, how many donors are there to Uku? 
How many don't? No, no, the total, yes, you, me, of course, but what's the total number of donors to Uku? Correct, 15,000. What's the total number of donors to Uku in the last six years during this fundraising campaign? 80% of that. Excellent, 10,000. How many donors to Uku in Ukraine? 1,000. Wow, this is an excellent audience. What do you think of these numbers? Well, if you're an optimist, you say, these are great. <laughs> if you are a pessimist, you say, even if all of this was in the United States and Canada, that is only 3% of the Ukrainian families living in the United States and Canada. But if you're not an optimist, if you're not a pessimist, if you're a startup, you look at this and say, Phenomenal upside potential. <laughs> so I'm going to jump at the end. I'm going to ask each of you to do what I did. Put down the names of 10 people that you personally know who should know Uku. And in the next six months, give them the information that they need about Uku. How will you do that? Very simple. On the first of every month, sit down and either write 10 postcards or 10 emails, and each of those just have three points. No one. What's an example of a point? We're number one in journalism. Our people won third place in the international competition. Our entrants score in the top 5%. By the way, for the computer sciences program, what percentile do they score? 100% of the students entering the computer science program score in the top 1% of the national exam. All I can say is why. Now, if you are a startup, you have two big problems. You grow very quickly and you worry about the quality of your organization and your students. Uh, now, a typical startup always says we're not growing fast enough and our quality is not high enough. And just to give a little flavor of the growth of Uku, when you come here, when I come here, I don't know whether I am in Lviv or in Silicon Valley. <laughs> I don't know. What I do know is that 10 years ago there were three faculties in undergraduate, two in master's programs. Today there are 10 faculties in undergraduate and 16 in master's programs. That is as impressive as any Silicon Valley startup. But to their credit, the people here, the managers and the teachers worry about quality. Now let me tell you a little secret about quality. When you can have your students be in the top 5%, when you can have your computer science students be in the top 1%, you can actually increase your quality of students as you grow. And in fact, that is the number one reason why we chose to invest so much in scholarships. Why? Because if you provide a scholarship, you make it possible for an extremely talented person, often a genius, either from a view or from Odessa, or Kyiv, or Kharkiv, or Mirhorod, or Enerhodar, to come here and get a world-class education. Now, I will pause and ask a very simple question. What can alumni do to make Uku, not great, because I think it is great, but to make Uku great in volume? Because if you think about this society, the Ukrainian society, if you think about this economy, the Ukrainian economy, it doesn't need hundreds of graduates from Uku. It needs thousands of graduates from Uku. It actually needs tens of thousands, but I can't think that hard, of graduates from Uku. So what can alumni do to make this startup university, the best startup university in the world, even more successful? 
I knew this would happen, so we'll come back to this later. But um, I will stop and jump to the end and tell you just a couple of personal stories that maybe will help to answer this question. Um, as, have you been to the United States? Have you talked to 50-year-olds? What they want to talk about is retirement. How soon can I retire? I want to anticipate, even before you get to 50, that maybe there's a better question. And that question is, regardless of whether I'm a high school math teacher, or an opera singer, or an entrepreneur, or an administrator, or a manager, or a craftsman, how can I become number one in my discipline, number one in my profession? Because when you do, you will love what you do. Does anyone know Warren Buffett? The greatest investor in the world is 87 years old. He has never had a more wonderful time. How can I become the best in what I do, whatever my vocation is? I got a tremendous lesson in this uh, during our last course uh, on a Saturday in April when I said, you know, being a business person, being an entrepreneur, is a great vocation. And Bishop Benedict was in the room, and I turned to him and I said, of course, it's not the greatest vocation. And he brought me up short because he got up and said, every vocation is equally important. Every vocation is equally important. But what is also important is to ask, not when can I retire, but how can I become number one in my chosen discipline, field, or profession. Uh, not for the ego, not for the money, although you will have plenty of it, but in order to be able to do a better job for your customer, whoever that customer might be. And that simple idea, whatever my field is, how can I become number one? Um, it's what I talk about to students in New York. It's what I talk about to students here. Uh, it's what I learned from Warren Buffett. I didn't make this up. Uh, but it might be an extraordinary principle for us to apply going forward. Um, as predicted, we did not have a chance to go through the rest of the material, which you see before you. Uh, I do want to stop on a couple of things, though, before, uh, oh, oh, yes, 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 mm -hmm. two quick things. Uh, you have to understand the business model of the United States, because I'd like you to think about what the business model for Ukraine should be. The business model for the United States, what made it great was a focus on the middle class, upward mobility, high value added production, universities, immigration, and education system, manufacturing, product development, and science. Well, we gave up our education system, we gave up our science by closing the labs, upward mobility is no longer there, and so what you have is three things that are essential to our success. Best university system in the world, immigration, and a culture of entrepreneurship. What would that mean if we had those things in this country? Now, remember I talked about value migration and value moving from old business models to new? Uh, what happened to the US business model? Let's talk just about the educational system. In 1972, our students were number one in math. Today, we're number three. Uh, in 1972, our si students were number one in science. Today, we're number 24. In 1972, I don't know what our students were in self-confidence, but today, they are number one in self-confidence. So I ask you to figure out what is wrong with that picture. I would like you to think, though, about the one thing. The Catholic Church in the United States has built 130 colleges and universities over the last 100 years. They are not the most endowed, but look at the endowments of some of these. And forget about Notre Dame. 
I can explain Notre Dame's endowment with one word. Football, okay? Football. And when we have a football team, we will be through the roof. I mean soccer. Uh, but when we think about what Uku could develop into, uh, it could develop into a world-class Catholic university. That is, I think, one of the objectives. That's why earlier I said we could use a few billionaires here and there. We could change this number from 15,000 to what? Anyone like arithmetic? 150, Sorry? 150,000. 150,000? 1.5 million. Ah, now we're talking. Okay. I will say there are more than 100 people in this room. But let's just start with 100. And all of you, if you have 10 people that you can write to, once a month, on the first of the month, no more than 10 people, no more than three points. Things that I didn't know, that you didn't know about Rukul, that you found out and you wanted to tell them. And you did that for six months. And then you asked them to do the same thing during the next six months. And then they asked their 10 friends to learn about Rukul in the next six months. And then you did it one more time. What would 100 people become? Well, in six months, 100 people would become 1,000. I'm really good at math. In another six months, 1,000 would become 10,000. In another six months, 10,000 would become 100,000. And in another six months, 100,000 would become... Talk about word of mouth. Talk about word of mouth. If you had a million people in this country who knew all of these facts, and all of the other new facts that will be developed in the next six months, nine months, 12 months. First of all, there is no university in the world that has a million investors and donors. But secondly, just the effect of people talking to each other and knowing about it would be unbelievable. Um, Next time, I think we'll spend a couple of hours, but I want to stop in a very, very unusual place. I want to stop in a very, very unusual place. I want to stop in a very, very unusual place. I want to stop in a very, very unusual place. I want to stop in a very, very unusual place. I want to stop in a very, very unusual place. I want to stop in a very, very unusual place. I want to stop in a very, very unusual place. Це є наш улюблений Юрій Шевельов. Чи тут хтось почитав другу чергу? Чи тут хтось почитав що-небудь Шевельов? А це був для мене шок, тому що я шукав за найкращою мовою. Але я знайшов щось інше. Я знайшов не тільки найкращу мову в прозі, я знайшов надзвичайно глибоке і тонке мислення. Я читав статті, що називалися «Четвертий Харків», бо це як наливали штучні почування в порожній душі мешканців того міста, і я буквально не розумів, чи я читав про Харків в 30-х роках, чи я читав про Америку в 2017-му році. Це ви мусите читати з словником. Це ви змусите читати два або три рази тому що там є стільки змісту. Але це є хроніка духової доби одного народу. Ця книжка мені пояснила, хто я є. Не тільки біологічно чи генетично, але також ідейно і духовно. Я знав, що цю книжку тяжко буде дістати. Але за кілька годин після того, як я післав імейл в Рокселяни, вона мені відписала, так, ця книжка є всім доступна, тільки підіть на цей веб-сайт, і ви можете її прочитати на екрані, ви можете собі її видрукувати, ви можете зробити PDF і вислати на ваш хендл. Вона є всім доступна. А Роксонана сьогодні мені сказала, що я дуже добре по-українській говорю. Це доказало одну річ що Роксоляна є дуже талановита, але вона дещо не дочуває. І тому це її звучало дуже-дуже добре. Але чому я про це говорю? 
Прочитавши цю книжку три рази і починаючи читати її четвертий раз, я є невимовно гордий, що я працюю для УКУ і що я підтримую УКУ. І я вірю, що як кожна свідома людина цю книжку прочитає, то тоді почне читати і інші книжки. Але я також маю інтуїцію і вірю, що ми стоїмо перед двома десятиліттями, в яких буде колосальний вибух розвитку української мови. Не тільки в літературі, але в економіці, але в точних науках, але в ділових справах. І якби ви читаєте цю книжку, ви побачите, що може осягнути наша мова і на якій підставі ми можемо будувати. Так що я жалую, що ми не могли кожен слайд дуже точно пояснити, але хочу тільки залишити може три речі з вами. Це є найважніша група руку. І не забудьте, що за 20 років у вас буде 20 тисяч. Я рахую на зріст університету. Чи ви будете тоді такі потужні, як ті випускники з Єйлу, які за 100 дзвінків по телефоні ухундували реставрацію цього музею. По-друге, яка б ваша ділянка не була, поставте перед собою вашого клієнта, замовника, студента, хто би це не був. І маючи це перед собою, поверніться до цієї ідеї, як я можу стати першиною, найкращим у своїй ділянці, не через его, не через гроші, але щоб краще допомогти цьому замовникові, цьому клієнту. І третє, і я знаю, що ви будете мене проклинати, а це мене не тривожить. Прошу прочитати цю книжку. І не забудьте, що це він написав в сорокових руках. Ви пам'ятаєте сорокові руки? Знищення. Нічого не було. Ніхто нічого не мав. А він писав, він писав, він писав. Я вірю, що він це писав для нас. Я вірю, що ми зможемо з цього скористати і перетворити це на щось дуже велике. А я не знаю, чи є час на питання. Я знаю, що якщо нема часу на питання, то я є безборонний після цього. Але якщо є питання тепер, то дуже радо, аж доки мене гачком не стягнуть з це. Прошу. Ви Okay, I am in love with you. The question was, <laughs> don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> the question was, you told us about some statistics. Where can we get these statistics so we can pass them on to others? The honest truth, I have been torturing these people on this side for the last four weeks to get me this data. So we have some of it and we will gladly provide it to you. But to be honest, I think we have just started. So these are, you know, a dozen things that we have found. I believe that there are two dozen and there will be another dozen this year. But we will figure out a way to get to every alumnus of the organization, the data, because who here is an investor? As time goes on, more of you will invest. I'm an investor. I've invested in stocks and bonds and real estate. Do you want to know what my best investment is? The investment that has produced the most per dollar of investment. Better than my startup investments, which have done extremely well. It is this startup university. This is the best investment I have ever made. I believe there are another million investors waiting don't have the information. Our job is to give them the information that they need to make an intelligent investment decision. And I just want to say, in addition to that, if I even as an investor, a donor, didn't know some of the statistics that you brought, I just did it on faith and trust in these young people. Absolutely correct. Absolutely. So, let me pause. Bishop Burris isn't here. 
Let me say the following. There are those of you who are saying that if we did this in two years, it would be a miracle to get to a million people. And I say, one good miracle deserves another. The fact that we are here, in this place, with those ratings, with that reputation, is a miracle. Now, I say, Bishop Boris's work has been done, and it is our turn now to take over and make the next miracle happen. And it's not 20 years ago when Bishop Boris, you know, he took a great risk. He said to Christina and me, he didn't ask for money, he said, come visit us. And why was it a great risk? Because we came. And there was nothing here. There was nothing here except for one thing. An unmistakable spirit. Unmistakable then, unmistakable today. But most people, to your point, still invest on faith. They still invest because of Bishop Buddhist. They still invest because they've had the opportunity to meet some students. We can't get to a million just on that basis. So, thank you. We have started this process. And if you don't get this within a month, please call me. And I will, yes, yes not that, call me. And I will scream and we will get it done. Thank you. <laughs>